Okay, welcome to the second slide rule roundup. Today I'm going to focus on scale sets. Um, so particularly on non-duplex slide rule scale sets. Uh, duplex slide rule scale sets, that's a whole can of worms. Maybe I'll tackle in another video. Um, let's get started with the simplest. Um, the Mannheim layout, uh, named after a French artillery officer from the uh, 19th century, uh, contains the A scale and the D scale on the base and the B and C on the slide so that it reads A, B, C, D, like that. Of course, the A and the B scale are um, two-decade half-length scales used for squaring and square roots. Um, however, in the 20th century, most slide rolls made with a Mannheim layout um, contain this layout of this slide roll. You have A, B, and C, D, but you also add C, I on the slider. Uh, which is useful for combined operations. You can sometimes do two multiplications or divisions at once with the CI scale. Um, okay, and it also adds the K scale. Most also have trigonometry on the reverse side um, and the L scale. So you have the S scale, the log scale, and the T scale on the back. Uh, so you can use, do trigonometry on this slide roll. You have to invert the slide in order to use those scales. Um, and you can see on a lot of Mannheim type slide rules, the S scale is keyed to the A scale, so they're next to each other. Um, it also get well, this is not an example actually. <laughs> on this Mannheim slide roll, uh, the S scale is keyed to the A scale. Uh, but, uh, so you can see there, it goes down below one degree on the S scale. Uh, uh, so these would both be considered Mannheim trig type or advanced Mannheim or just a Mannheim type slide roll um, from kind of the height of the slide roll era. Um, notice this slide roll contains um, hairlines on the back for using the S, L, and T scale uh, from the back. Actually, it includes a line on both sides. So you could use the trigonometry scales or the log scale from the back without having to invert the slide. Okay. Stepping up to the next level of complexity is the reed style slide roll. Um, here's a reed style slide roll of a type I've used in many videos. Uh, versus the Mannheim type slide roll, the reed slide roll adds on the front of the slide roll uh, an L scale. So the K scale is moved to the top and the L scale is then placed on the bottom. This is the most common reeds type layout, although you'll see some variation. Um, what that does is it allows you to get an extra scale on the reverse, on the slide. So you can see most reeds type slide rolls have the S, T, and S and T scale on the slide. And then on almost all reeds slide rolls, the S scale is keyed to the C scale. Um, instead of the A scale. And the reason they can get away with that is because the extra range of the S scale is now on the S and T scale. Um, so instead of doubling up the S scale and having a key to A, they actually split it into two scales. Um, okay. REITS is really one of my favorite slide roll layouts. Um, I like it because you can use the L scale without uh, using the reverse of the slide roll. And I like it because it has the extra um, extra accuracy of the sine scale. Uh, and additionally, there are some maneuvers you can do for trigonometry um, only when both are keyed to C and D, uh, the S and the T scale. Okay, so the REITs is really one of my favorite slide roll layouts um, in terms of simple slide rolls. Um, very nice, elegant layout. Okay. Moving on up in complexity, uh, we have the Darmstadt layout. Uh, the theory is that uh, K and E had some sort of patent on duplex, something about duplex slide rolls. So some uh, European manufacturer has tried to get a more complicated slide roll, um, especially one having log log scales. Uh, so what the Darmstadt adds to the Reed slide roll um, is a Pythagorean scale, Pythagorean scale. Um, a typical Darmstadt slide roll actually deletes the ST scale, but it moves the other trig uh, functions S and T to the outside of the slide roll. Now, on a very classic Faber 
or a Nestler 21 type uh, REIT slide roll, um, actually the S and T scale are on the forward edge, facing you edge of the slide roll. So the P scale is the last one on the top. And the log scale is on the top edge, um, like here. And so what happens is the cursor has lines that hang down um, on the top and the bottom, the bottom for reading the trigonometry scales and the top for reading the log scale. Um, actually makes them kind of look fairly simple from the top, uh, but they contain all those uh, scales. Now, the other innovation of the Darmstadt slide rule is that it contains log-log scales. Those log-log scales um, are on the back of the slide. Uh, many or most Darmstadt slide rules contain a line for reading them on the back, um, but you could also flip the slide over. Um, so this uh, slide rule has a classic Darmstadt scale set, even if it's not a classic wooden construction where the L scale is off here and the S and T scale are off the bottom. Okay, um, the downside I think of the Darmstadt slide rule is that it doesn't have the S T scale. Um, yes, there are ways to get around that, but you always end up doing a computation which is a little less elegant than if you just had the S T scale, uh, like you have on the Reed slide rule. Um, I'm also, you know, with the log log scales, it's nice to have them, um, but really I like the log log slide rules to have um, both the uh, regular LL scales and the inverse scales. Um, so really just having one kind of feels like you're missing out on the full complement of log log scales, but maybe it's better than nothing depending on your applications. Okay. Um, okay, now let's look at another type of slide rule. I'm going to call this the Euro student type slide rule. Um, this is a Jakar 29 student log log slide rule. Um, if you look at the front of this slide rule, um, it's basically a copy of the Aristo Scholar slide rule. Um, the same scales on the front of the slide rule, and that's actually a very copied sky, uh, slide rule, just like the Aristo Studio is a very copied engineering slide rule. Uh, the Scholar is a very uh, copied uh, student type slide rule. Um, sometimes it's called a student read slide rule because it has the same scales on the front um, as the read slide rule has if you combine the front and the back. Um, but I like to compare it more to a Darmstadt style slide rule because the trigonometry is on the front. You know, when the trigonometry functions are on the slide, like on a read style slide rule, you have to use them differently. Um, so, really, in trig functionality, uh, the student slide roll of this type is more similar to the um, Darmstadt style slide roll. Of course, um, the ri original scholar does not have ST, but later scholars and most clones have this uh, ST scale. Now this slide roll um, has an additional feature um, which is not on the base Aristo scholar, which is it does have log log scales and an S scale um, on the back of the slide. A lot of the, the student rolls are blank on the back, um, and on the Aristo Scholar, there are some versions which are blank and some which have the log log scales and some which have other things on the back of the slide. Of course, there's no lines for reading these on the back, so you must uh, flip the slide over in order to use these scales. Um, okay, but the basic basics of this layout are on the front. That stuff on the back is kind of a bonus. Um, okay, so we have the Euro style student slide roll. Okay, the other slide rolls I want to show you, um, I wouldn't call them standard layouts, but are kind of just a couple interesting slide rolls. Uh, first is a, the Picket Simplex Trig layout. Um, this is actually one of my favorite layouts. Um, I'm not a big, this is model number 902 from Picket. It's blank on the back except for some slide roll instructions. <laughs> um, this is really one of my favorite layouts. I only wish another manufacturer besides Picket had made it uh, so that it wasn't in a, with the typical Picket metal construction, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, let's look at the layout. What you have um, are basically the standard Mannheim layout, A, B, C, D, C, I. You have the K and the L scale, um, and S and T. Now, S is keyed to C, which I like, and you, but you might say there's no S, T scale. Well, in my opinion, when trig is on the slide, it's much easier to get by without the ST scale than if trig is on the base. So, Picket adds a mark here um, on the C scale uh, for conversion to radians, and that mark can be used 
essentially as the index of the ST scale, uh, and then you can use C as uh, the ST scale. Uh, so you can have essentially the function of the ST scale without um, kind of refiguring your trig solutions um, or actually having the ST scale. Um, so this is one of my favorite layouts. Um, Pickett makes it um, in a plastic version, the 120. Um, I really just wish, you know, Hemi or some other manufacturer had made a slide roll with this layout. Uh, maybe someone did that I don't know about, but I have never seen it. <laughs> okay, another interesting layout, let's call it the folded scale layout. Um, again, I, I'm not talking about duplex slide rolls, which of course have, uh, a lot of them have folded scales. Um, you'll see a lot of simpler slide rolls like this uh, post-1445 slide roll, um, which instead of having A, B, have D, F, C, F. Notice it doesn't have all the folded scales because it doesn't have C, I, F um, in the middle, although there are some later versions that do. Um, the idea behind this slide roll is if you, if you set, say, a proportion, uh, say 1 to 2 on C, D, then we know that we can read that proportion everywhere on C, D. However, you might go off scale here at C at 6. Uh, but on this slide roll, you know, you can now jump to the 6 on CF and read result on DF12 if you want. Um, so basically, it always keeps your result on scale uh, when reading proportions. Um, doesn't have the full, uh, doesn't have the full complement of folded scales. But the idea up here is basically that instead of having AB, which you can use to always be on scale, right? thinking of kind of old school way to think about slide rolls. With A and B, if you think of that as a double CD scale, you can always stay on scale. Um, so instead of having that way of always staying on scale, uh, they have the folded scale way of always staying on scale, which gives you uh, extra accuracy. Um, this slide roll, in addition to what you see here, um, has uh, inverted trig scales. This is something Hemi was fond of. Um, not a big fan. Um, but it kind of matches their inverted L scale, which is also present on the, um, the Mannheim slide roll from Hemi that I showed you. Um, so you can use these scales by setting it and then reading the result um, on, the, on the D scale at the index of C when they're inverted like that. Um, okay, so this is an interesting slide roll. You see other ones with this idea. So instead of A, B, they have C, F, D, F here. So I'm showing you that for that reason. Um, let's see. I think that about rounds up the um, non-duplex scale set roundup. Tell me what's your favorite scale set out of these. I'd have to say that mine is really the REIT scale set, uh, close runner-up being this picket, and uh, it might win if it wasn't uh, metal construction. <laughs> um, or if maybe they had uh, colored in the inverse scales with uh, red, like on their more high-end slide rolls. Um, so I'd say the, the picket slide roll and the REIT slide roll are my favorite uh, scale sets from the Roundup. Uh, let me know what you think. What's your favorite non-duplex uh, scale set?